welcome to weekly current affairs session for environment science and technology for the week of november 30 to december 7 we'll be covering all the current affairs that we have seen in the past one week and which are also important from your exam point of view let's begin the session for today let's see what are the topics that we have see in the index we'll be covering uh, three topics for today the first one is great barrier reef the second one is zombie virus and the third one and most important one for us today is the great Indian bustard. If you, uh, if you are already aware of seize the mains then that's fine but let me uh, reiterate what seize the mains is. See seize the mains is a daily answer writing initiative of our academy. We put one question in this 2.30 pm live session every day and we also update that question on our website. What you do is, uh, since that question is relevant for your UPSC or State Civil Services mains examination, what you do is, you go through the video at 9 pm for this question that will be telecasted on our channel today, that would be, uh, you know, premiered at 9 pm today. Through that discussion at 9 pm, I will tell you how to write uh, a good answer for this question. The answer would be also uploaded on our website, which is rajaisacademy.com. After all the discussion and going through the model answer, you can write your own answer and post it on our website in the comment section under each question and our team will evaluate your answers in the next few days. Give them, uh, give your answers a marking out of 15 or 10, whatever the question uh, says and uh, they'll give you their feedback entirely free of cost. So the question for today is question 134. Explain the role of coral reefs in maintaining ecological balance. What are the factors that lead to coral bleaching? Briefly discuss. Answer in 150 words. Again, uh, there is a grammatical error here. There should be an interrogation mark there. So yes, uh, that is the question that you have uh, today. This question has been updated on our... <coughs> sorry. This question has been updated on our website. So definitely go through the discussion at 9 p.m. today, go through the model answer and send your answers to us. First topic for today is regarding the Great Barrier Reef. The Great Barrier Reef should be placed on World Heritage in Danger List, UN backed report says. So a report has come up and they said ki jo Great Barrier Reef hai, that is off the coast of Australia in Queensland. Great Barrier Reef should be, uh, it is part of World Heritage. First of all, uh, you know, it is a part of UN list of World Heritages. They say that this, uh, uh, this Great Barrier Reef should be placed under World Heritages in danger. So, as you can see, this is the location of Great Barrier Reef. As you can see, this is Australia. And Australia ki eastern coast par, at the eastern coast of Australia, this Great Barrier Reef is located. Yes, uh, good afternoon all of you. So this Great Barrier Reef is located here and Great Barrier Reef is very important from ecological point of view. That is what the seize the mains question is about uh, for today. If you can see these are coral reefs here. Coral reefs ka bohat hi bada group hai. A long chain of coral reefs is known as the Great Barrier Reef. It prevents Australia from strong tides of the ocean, strong waves of the ocean, um, strong uh, natural disasters that might occur on its coastline. So it is very important that way. What is the Great Barrier Reef? Let's look at the news once again. They say that the, the reef is currently not in the endangered list. So any uh, intangible heritage or any UN World Heritage can be put in the endangered list also. So they, uh, you know, Australia was putting a lot of efforts to protect this Great Barrier Reef because this is heritage for mankind. This is world heritage. They were putting a lot of efforts, but still there is a problem of coral bleaching that can be seen. What happens is in these reefs, if you can, uh, you know, look at it closely, there is a small algae called zooxanthellae. Choti si algae hoti hai, jiska naam hota hai zooxanthellae. And that algae stays inside the reef and that is in symbiotic relation with the reef. So, jo zooxanthellae, uh, jo bhi matter release karti hai, that is consumed by the reef itself and the reef gives shelter to that algae. That algae has color which gives beautiful colors to this coral reef. Now, sometimes what happens due to factors like pollution, due to factors like increasing temperature of the ocean that zooxanthellae algae that cannot survive in the coral reef then what happens that zooxanthellae algae either it dies or it leaves the coral reef and hence the colored the 
color that was available in this coral reef that could be seen on this coral reef that was just because the algae was there now since the algae leaves algae leaves and algae dies this coral reef that it turns into white pura white color ho jata hai is coral reef ka and that is known as coral bleaching because after bleaching what you see is white color so here you can see a lot of colors but there are many areas in this great barrier reef also where you know long up till long kilometers the entire reef has gone white so that is coral bleaching and that is not very good for the environment why because as you can see a lot of marine animals depend on the coral reefs coral reefs bahut sare nutrients aur organic matter release karte hain they release a lot of nutrients and organic matter and due to which these marine species a lot of fish also they are dependent on nutrients from coral reefs not only the marine species and the zooxanthellae algae sometimes uh, whatever nutrient recycling or the carbon cycle the nitrogen cycle that is happening inside the ocean that is also dependent on these coral reefs only the amount of carbon that is absorbed by coral reefs is of very much significance agar coral bleaching ho jati if coral bleaching happens then the ocean waters will have a lot of carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide ki problem kya hai when you are operating at the ocean level at the surface of ocean ocean absorbs atmospheric carbon to jo bhi hamara pollution ki wajah se greenhouse gases ki wajah se global warming hota hai that is reduced by the presence of oceans because oceans can absorb carbon dioxide and this uh, you know coral reefs they help in carbon recycling carbon uh, cycle jo aapka hota hai usme bahut help karte hain and oceans can absorb more and more of carbon dioxide and oxygen levels in the environment can be maintained at optimal levels now if these coral reefs their ecology gets imbalanced that carbon dioxide will not be absorbed and hence more global warming will happen and sea levels will rise hence great barrier reef that is the biggest coral reef uh, of the entire world that is of very much importance for mankind for our survival so that's why uh, unesco is very serious about it they say that uh, there was a joint report by iucn iucn jo aapki red data list release karta hai regarding endangered or vulnerable species and unesco's world heritage center it has they the report has recommended that the great barrier reef should be inscribed on the list of world heritage and danger which has been opposed by australia because this is near australia and australia is putting efforts it is very important for australian tourism and australian economy so what is the great barrier reef a uh, reef let us uh, let us read that it is located off the coast of queensland in australia world's largest coral reef system hai with over 2900 individual reefs 900 islands that is a lot and an area covering approximately 344000 square kilometers that is a huge area huge span hai it is one of the biggest biodiversity hotspots in the world as <clears throat> in the world as well as one of the largest carbon sinks carbon sinks as i just explained you coral reefs they have the capability to absorb carbon and hence they are very important for marine ecology and the marine ecosystem it is managed as a multiple use area where a range of commercial and tourism activities are permitted so due to all this tourism due to the pollution due to global warming this reef is seeing a lot of coral bleaching see jo coral reefs hote hain they are also known as tropical forest of the ocean now tropical forests are located in equatorial regions uh, jo aapke tropical forest hain they are very important they are known as lungs of the earth tropical forests are very dense and very thick and wide so these are also known as lungs of the earth kyunki wo air ko recycle karte hain they, uh, they you know purify the air so coral reefs are sometimes in a way they are referred to as tropical forest of the ocean so that uh, importance has been emphasized here it is adversely and significantly impacted by climate change factors affecting its resilience to sustain and regenerate itself now frequent bleaching effects sometimes they say that yes bleaching agar ek bari ho jati hai zooxanthellae leaves the coral reef once then yes if the conditions are optimal agar achhi environmental conditions milti hain us algae ko it can come back and yes the coral reef can get its color back again but frequent bleaching events have made many reefs sterile so that is a problem that some amount of conservation and uh, you know then lazy efforts in the upcoming years that leaves many reefs sterile that they can never be inhabited by uh, zooxanthellae again and hence they cannot support biodiversity larger biodiversity also in the ocean again 
degraded water quality poses a particular threat to marine life and corals pollutants from agriculture and construction activities have been damaging and other proposed develop developments around the queensland coast are of our matters of concern so what does putting great barrier reef on the list of world heritage uh, uh, world heritage in danger entail isko is list mein dalne se fayda kya hoga so let's read out the list of world heritage in danger is designed to inform the international community that something is in danger that conditions which threaten the characteristics for which a property was inscribed to the world heritage uh, list and to encourage corrective action so basically it brings all the international community to awareness and to action it also highlights all the measures that need to be taken to conserve a particular world heritage because it is already in danger it is endangered corrective efforts bataye jate hain aur aise factors bhi list down kiye jate hain for example tourism or you know having new settlements with uh, with regards to or near the great barrier reef so they can uh, be kept in check all the factors can be kept in check under the 1972 world heritage convention inscribing a site on the list allows world heritage committee to allocate immediate assistance from the world heritage fund to the endangered property so great barrier reef it is not just a property of australia ya queensland ki property nahi hai this is something that belongs to the entire mankind because our survival depends on it so if it gets that endangered category agar endangered category mein aa jata hai to uske baad world heritage fund se uh, you know uh, budget al allocation ho jayega and more efforts can be put towards saving it it will uh, invite greater scrutiny for the site bahut zyada uh, you know checking measures honge more scrutiny would be there and australia might not like it that's why they are defending their defending this proposal that's why they are against it so yes that was the that was the end of our first topic if there are any doubts let me know in the comment section All right. Yes. Uh, a very good afternoon, all of you, everybody. Any doubts with regards to the first topic? All right. So let's move on to our second topic of the day. That is, new virus revived after fifty thousand years. What to know about the zombie virus? See, zombie virus or zombie glaciers. के बारे में zombie ice के बारे में हमने we discussed about zombie ice a few lectures back on in one of our Wednesday discussions. What is a zombie virus? See, global warming की वजह से काफी glaciers melt down कर रहे हैं. And we saw the COVID-19 pandemic also. In one way, it was linked to the climate change or global warming. See, if you see that there is a there is a lot of snow or this is a glacier that is melting. काफी ज्यादा ऐसे माइक्रोब्स होते हैं जो कि स्नो में कैद होते हैं देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ माइक्रोब्स विच आर एक्चुअली प्रेजेंट इन साइड द स्नो बट दे कैन नॉट एस्केप इन टू एक्चुअल ह्यूमन सेटलमेंट्स या एनिमल सेटलमेंट्स में स्केप नहीं कर सकते बिकॉज दे आर ट्रैप्ड इन साइड द स्नो एंड दैट स्नो हैज नॉट मेल्टेड फॉर थाउजेंड्स और मिलियंस ऑफ ईयर्स तो क्योंकि वो स्नो के अंदर ट्रैप्ड रहते हैं इसलिए वो माइक्रोब्स हमें नुकसान नहीं करते नव जॉम्बी वायरस इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ वायरस और आर इज अ टाइप ऑफ वायरस Which, when due to global warming, global warming की वजह से जब ये पुरानी आइस मेल्ट कर जाती है तो ये वायरस भी रिलीज हो जाता है यू नो वायरस इज बेसिकली ए डेड बॉडी वायरस के पास अपनी लाइफ नहीं होती बट वायरस हैज जेनेटिक मटीरियल इन साइड इट वायरस का जो होता है आइदर इट हैज डी एन ए इन साइड इट और इट हैज आर एन एज जेनेटिक मटीरियल देर इज नथिंग एल्स देर आर नो लाइफ फॉर्म्स प्रेजेंट इन साइड द वायरस वायरस इट सेल्फ इज डेड सो येस वायरस इज can stay inside the snow of these glaciers for a very long time and when the snow melts which has not melted for thousands of years and hence we have not seen that virus in our water soil or air for thousands of years that could now be released from this ice ab wo is ice se agar release ho jata hai then there are high chances that human beings first of all might not have immunity to it in fact our plants and animals might not have got immunity for it and if there is no immunity with, with regards to these viruses and these viruses are very new for us because they were earlier trapped and now they have been set free so there is no immunity uh, on our part then again these can cause pandemics so these that's why they are known as zombie virus that they come to your life and uh, you know they come to cause a pandemic or to kill a lot of human beings or other lives 
So as the issue of global warming becomes the main area of concern for the future, a number of glaciers and permafrost have been melting uncontrollably, freeing up bacteria and viruses that have been on ice for years. So that is your where your zombie virus is coming out from. So uh, there is a new virus uh, they ha that has been revived after 50,000 years. So scientists are worried about this. Recently, the French scientists have warned of the onset of another outbreak after they revived a almost 50,000 year old zombie virus buried in under a frozen lake in Russia. So, some French scientists have kafi matlab discovered kya hai and they uh, they uh, they accidentally revived another virus. This has broken the previous record held by a 30,000 year virus, which jo ki that was the oldest virus that had been that had been revived till date discovered by the same team in Siberia in 2013. So, this team they keep on discovering many viruses there in the uh, glacier area of the North Pole, Arctic region mein kafi research carry out karte and uh, then they have recognized a lot of zombie viruses. So, yes, uh, you know, uh, this is the text available to you. This entire presentation would be uploaded on the Telegram channel in a while on uh, Raj Malhotra's IAS Telegram channel. So, what you can do is download and read it out from there. The entire concept has been explained regarding zombie virus. What you can do is that, uh, yes, uh, is the virus potentially harmful? This part is important that all of the zombie viruses have the potential to be infectious and hence pose a health danger. We might see another pandemic if you know uh, we do not have the immunity for it. So yes, potentially dangerous, hote, they can be, they can cause certain kinds of diseases if not death. It is believed that pandemics like COVID-19 will become more common in future as melting permafrost releases long dormant viruses. Dormant means something has been in, something that has been in sleep for a lot of years. So, after the COVID-19 pandemic, we earlier we used to say we see a pandemic every 100 years, but now due to climate change and global warming, there are high chances that we will see very frequent pandemics in future. Now, uh, before coming to the last topic of the day, that is the Great Indian Bustard. It has been in news for quite a while and it is a very important bird for our country. Let me know if there are any doubts in the comment section. Alright, so yes, uh, no doubts upcoming. So the next topic is the great Indian bustard. First of all, let's see what is this bird. Recently, Supreme Court has directed the government to launch a project like Project Tiger to save the great Indian bustard. Yes, okay, we have a doubt there. Alright, thank uh, uh, you. are welcome, uh, Ambika. Alright, so uh, the great Indian bustard, I'll just, uh, you know, give you the entire view of the screen. Yes, protecting the great Indian bustard. What the Supreme Court has done is recently they have given directions to the government that the project Tiger was going on before, there is no initiative that you great Indian bustard ke liye bhi launch kijiye to protect and to uh, increase its number. See, a lot of efforts have been launched by the government earlier to increase the number of great Indian bustard. But again, the population of great Indian bustard has been falling down. What is the problem? Let's see what is the great Indian bustard bird. And where is it found? See, I, I want you to look at this map. Look at the green areas in the map. That is where these are the states where Great Indian Bustard is found. So, parts of Rajasthan and Gujarat, Rajasthan or uh, Rajasthan or Gujarat ki geographical boundary hai. Then you have some parts of uh, Maharashtra, Andhra, Karnataka. So, these are the places where Great Indian Bustard is found. Iska jo habitat hai in states mein hota tha, but right now, this great Indian bustard bird has been restricted to only this part of Rajasthan. If you have been looking at previous year questions of uh, UPSC civil services examination prelims, they asked you about desert national park. Desert national park is in Jaisalmer area mein located hai in Rajasthan. Great Indian bustard is the state bird of Rajasthan, unki state bird. Hai. The government has put a lot of efforts to conserve this bird. Now in this desert national park is the and this is the last population of this bird. So, uh, yes.
So I think yes, there was a problem here. Can you uh, listen to the audio properly and can you see the video properly all of you? Uh, okay. All right, all right. So the last surviving population here is bird ki. It is located in this area only. Now the problem is ki efforts to bahut hote hain, but illegal hunting happens. Plus this is a very big bird. What happens is jo bhi aapki power lines hoti hain, electricity lines, usme ye bird trap ho jati hai and then it dies. So if you look at the population earlier, it was in 196. Uh, in 1969 we had around 1300 great Indian bustards. Then in 1978 it came down to 745. And as of now, if you talk about 2020, there are less than 150 birds left. Approximately, bohat kam number hai, around 150 birds left hai. And a lot of efforts have been put. What the government does is, ki jo inka habitat hota hai, wahan par hi chote se nest create karte, kar dete, great Indian bustards ke, bustard clay. For example, this is your desert national park. So inside the desert national park, small, small nests are created for great Indian buster to lay its eggs on. And these chote chote nests are done fencing. Ki jati hai. A lot of fencing is done so that these eggs are not harmed by other animals, other birds or other species. So nobody can enter here, no livestock can enter here. And in the nest or uh, nest mein eggs preserve kiye jate hai. So those efforts were taken. What other thing was done that if a transmission line is running, if there is a transmission line run which is a great Indian bustard, maybe after collision ke baad, ya, you know, takrane ke baad, if that bustard dies. So what they do is they put mirror reflectors on this. Mirrors laga diye jate hai, transmission lines ke upar. So since these mirrors are put on the transmission lines, uh, after that what happens? The great Indian bustard wire ki taraf nahi aata. Wire ki taraf hi great Indian bustard nahi aata. It changes its position, it changes its way of flight, it's change uh, path of flight. Wo change kar deta hai. And recently, Supreme Court has directed the government ki jo uh, wires hai, carrying a, a lot of electricity, bahut high voltage electricity hai, ya air mein nahi, but to protect the habitat of these birds and to protect these birds from, you know, dying with these transmission lines in power lines se, aap ye jo transmission lines se, isko underground le ki jiye. So, lay them underground. And these are one of some of the efforts that are being taken. Recently, the Supreme Court ne government said that it has launched something like the Project Tiger because Project Tiger helped in almost doubling the uh, doubling or even more than that, uh, more than double has happened, uh, more than double population we have seen uh, of uh, tigers uh, when it was launched. So, Project Tiger ki intensity ka or uh, you know level ka ek project Great Indian Bustard ke liye launch karne ki baat hui hai. Also, if you talk about the conservation status of Great Indian Bustard, it falls under the critically endangered category of IUCN. Critically endangered category mein aata hai and listed in Wildlife Protection Act of uh, Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act. Jabka conservation of migratory species hai, CMS convention, under that also when it happened in India, last time that convention happened in India, to jo humara, jo, uh, you know, the bird that was representing India at CMS in Gujarat, that was Great Indian Bustard itself. So, a lot of efforts are being taken and uh, preparing this bird for your exam is very much important. It is a part of your syllabus. There are some uh, initiatives, there is a task force that is running to protect this bird. There is habitat improvement and conservation breeding of Great Indian Bustard that is running. Again, uh, the thing I was talking about that it has been listed in Appendix 1 of Conservation of Migratory Species. This appendix 1 mein list down kiya gaya hai and it was the mascot of 13th CMS COP, Conservation of Migratory Species. We have ka COP pada hai, we UNFCC ka COP pada hai. There is Conservation of Migratory Species also. Uska bhi jab COP hua tha, Conference of Parties, COP 13. It was held in Gandhi Nagar, Gujarat and our mascot was Great Indian Bustard because we consider conservation of this bird as our top priority. There is desert national park that is located entirely for the conservation of this bird. And uh, yes, direction, uh, directions to NGT have been given with regards to conservation and bustard conservation uh, breeding centers are there in many parts of Rajasthan, especially in Jaisalmer where it is naturally found. So this was about today's discussion. Today's discussion was, uh, you know, concerning environment topics only. From next week, we will be having a combined current affairs discussion for the entire week on Saturdays probably, uh, you will be informed in time. 
Till then, uh, stay tuned with Seize the Mains initiative, stay tuned to our channel and download the PDF and sometime from our Telegram channel. I will see you with another discussion on Seize the Mains at 9 pm today and on the subsequent days. All the best.